yet again another Raspberry Pi 4 case. But this one's a little different. Number one, you do get a Pi LED fan, but this one also has this little offset board, which will plug into our Pi at some point. But long story short, <clears throat> we should be able to plug it in like that. And <clears throat> now you get full size HDMI output. Pretty cool, right? So we're gonna check out this case, which makes your pie a little bigger, but you get a fan, you get heat sinks, you get a nice clear case. So we call this the set top box kit. All right, so let's check it out. Well packaged, it does come with a screwdriver, it comes with your offsets and the case. Everything is very well packaged. You do get very nice rubber feet here and then you get your mount, your fan mounts, rubber feet. So it looks like a pretty darn good uh, fan. It is 5 volt at 0.1 amps and it looks pretty good. This does not look like, like a cheap fan so that's exciting. And then we have our plastic pieces. So just like any layered pie case or acrylic pie case, they send it to you with the shrink wrap and then as well as the sticky paper on there still. A pro tip on this is if you really want, you know, first it helps to have nails. Second, it, um, see that's what it's gonna be like eventually. Look at that, ooh, lots of ports. That's pretty cool. That's why I like this case initially is a lot of you have HDMI cables hanging around and it just makes for one less dongle or one less cable you have to buy. Also, that's pretty cool that everything comes out one side. So as I was mentioning, pro tip on these is long nails or get a wet cloth or sponge and dampen it first. Um, but I usually just work my way one by one. Okay, it's like that because you have the screw a little bit further out. So thin ones on the four here for the pie and then the thicker ones on the other one. So see the difference? Thick, two thick ones on the outside, thin ones on the inside. All right, that's good. So number two, pl you plug those two together, then you stick them down, and then you add four pillars onto the case. So there are two different size risers, people. There's a thicker and a thinner. That's how they differentiate them, but I don't know if you can see the difference there. But one is a little taller on the right. The taller ones go in the middle. The thicker ones go on the outside. So you'll figure it out. Yeah, they're showing it with the copper wires facing up that. No closest to us, I believe it should be red, red, and then ground. So either one of the first two pins closest to us are red, and then that third pin should be a ground. And, all right, and then you get the rubber feet. So you see firm fit, nothing moving around. I did just miss those two nuts. You're supposed to put these two nuts on the pie to just mount the pie, but the pie was already mounted by these by these two pillars here. So it's not going anywhere. Also, you might just wanna plug in your fan before you button it all up, but I'm very, very um, confident that my fan should start right up. Another thing I noticed on this board is there is like a little power out for an additional fan. You can plug another fan in there, or you might be able to run this fan from there and then keep all your GPIs open. Or you could, you can easily run this fan over to that fan controller. Yeah, and the instructions, they didn't do that. But I don't know why you couldn't. Um, and then there you have it. Let's do a quick little heat test on it, but I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Let's also just plug it in really quick and see. Got those rubber feet, really nice. It's not going anywhere. You got every single output on the front. Let's go ahead and plug in the power. Let's turn this fan on. Turn our switch. Ooh, let's see if it's color changing or not. Let's turn off these lights.
So here's a fan noise test. It's not that loud. I love seeing what's inside of stuff. So the fact that it's clear, this is really cool. Still have access to the GPIO. You still have access to the camera port. Oh, if you wanna, you know, run a power um, cable. The fans on the five volt thing, you can actually run this on 3.7 volt on the GPIO to slow it down a little bit if you want, even less noise. And like I said, my favorite thing about this, you have two full size HDMI ports now. So that's nice. And then another thing I found out is, you know, you have that little power out so you can plug in a, a fan. And you might be wondering, well, hey, you have all this extra space. Well, why don't you throw your, your SSD hard drive right there? You know, why don't you use, you could use that space. As far as ventilation, you have, you know, the fan. By the way, this is currently blowing on the Pi. So if you're wondering if you order this case where you can see the, the label faces down. So wherever the label is on the fan, it's gonna shoot that direction. Do you have a spot for the SD card there? And I guess if you really want more ventilation, you can maybe drill holes in this or something, but to be honest with you, it's such a big case. Um, and even if the heat kind of moves over here into this area, that's not really a big deal. Um, it's still gonna get some airflow out of these cracks and I think it's gonna do well, but we'll go ahead and run a couple speed tests just to make sure. Let's exit out to the uh, thing here. And as you see, it's stock clock. And we, what temps do we have here? 39 degrees, pretty standard with no major heat sink on there. Oh, now we're down to 37. That fan will help quite a bit. That's one of the great things about active cooling cases. Let's go ahead and max out the CPU here, just a second. There we go. We'll run a few of these tests and just see how high we can get it. Now, as far as passive cooling versus active cooling, one of the biggest things as far as why you might not want a fan is the noise and fans do eventually die now i review so many cases i've actually never had a fan die on me and fan technology and things are getting better and a lot of these kits are being sold with way better fans i remember back in the day you got the cheapest 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 fans and people are kind of going the extra mile these days so um Active cooling though, however, the biggest deal is, as you'll see with these temperature readings, will very quickly reduce the temperature of your pies, especially after a big load. Passive cooling, although works great, it's quiet, no fans are replaced. Um, a, it could cost, those cases tend to be a little bit more money. Um, depending on which one you get, you can get the Flirt for pretty cheap, but some of the other ones. Uh, but you have no fan to replace, and you really have to do some crazy stuff until you start maxing out passive cooling so you go quite a bit it jumped quite a bit but look how fast it's going down we'll run that test again just back to back so we got it down to 43 you know and it's going to jump up again to maybe 50 but as you see the raspberry pi really needs to get up to 80 degrees or so until you're going to see some throttling and so this fan this case is going to be just great now, if you're an extreme pyre and you want something even better, uh, then I recommend you know going for the Ice Tower or something like that. And this particular brand of case manufacturer, uh, they go by 52 Pi or Geek Pi. I know they're kind of, I don't know if they're sister companies, but you'll find them selling on Amazon. Um, they sell the Ice Tower case. And the Ice Tower case is a much better cooling case, but you don't get this cool case here and you don't get those big HDMI ports. It's a totally different look in my opinion. So I, I imagine this is gonna come read just fine. And my clothing, clo closing thoughts on this case is for $25 and it comes with the fan and it comes with that expansion. Yeah, there you go. Wow, see, it barely jumped and now it's going down again. So like I said, with the fan, with the expansion, not needing an adapter anymore, getting an extra two, um, you know, pins for some sort of external device, having room for an external hard drive. It actually looks like a computer now or a cable box, whatever you wanna say. Um, it was fun to put together, easy instructions. See, we're already down to 40 now. Let's just say active cooling, it's gonna work just great. 
So um, here it is. If you didn't see those results, you know we were only able to get up to 47 degrees, which is plenty good for most modern cooling. Here's my case. Finally get a full-size HDMI out of there. You can run your controllers out of here. Remember, this is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. This is not going to block any of that. This acrylic will not. You'll still get nice distance there. So I got to give this two thumbs up. I found no issues with the case. It did its job. It cooled. It was unique. I don't know what else to say. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.